Hello and welcome to the Alatia Foundation podcast. My name is Nawid Jabarkil. Today we're delighted to welcome Dr. Veronica Bermudez Benito. Dr. Bermudez is an independent consultant and director of the Energy Department at Al Wajba Establishment. Dr. Bermudez has a PhD in physics from the Universidad Autónoma de Madrid in Spain and holds a number of international awards for her research activity. She's an associate editor of the Journal of Renewable and Sustainable Energy and acts as an independent expert for a number of international well-known technological companies, as well as funding agencies such as the European Commission and European national funding bodies. She's also an IEEE senior fellow and is actively engaged in promoting science among youth with a focus on STEM for women. Welcome to the podcast, Dr. Bermudez. Hello, now with. Thank you very much for having me here and giving me the opportunity to discuss about the topic, this important great. topic. Thank you. Great to have you. Let's get to the heart of the matter then. What role do you see solar power playing, something that you've focused on uh, quite a lot in your career in the Middle East transition to a renewable energy future? Yeah, uh, well, I, I think that solar power is uh, really poised to be a cornerstone in the in the Middle East renewable energy transition, uh, the solar resources are are, uh, are very important in in the region, and um, while the marginal cost of, of fossil fuels may still be low, low the long term sustainability and environmental costs associated with fo- fossil fuels are increasingly recognized, and 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 and, and the the cost of fossil fuels. Uh, the marginal cost will continue to increase due to well the depl- depletion and cost increase in the, in the exploitation. So this makes that um, uh, we have a solar as a unique posi- uniquely positioned in the in the region due to the high solar irradiance, with some areas receiving uh, two thousand to three thousand hours of uh, sunshine per per year. And there are a number of different technologies that we can we can use. And, and I would like also to mention the fact that uh, um, it, it is not only related to the fact that it is an energy transition to a sustainable a sustainable uh, transition. It is something that economically make a lot of sense. So we are today burning resources, fossil fuel resources, that are needed for a huge amount of other applications such as ammonia, polymer, plastic fibers, for which we do not have alternative. And at the same time, we have. Uh, renewable sources and solar, which makes a lot of sense in the in the region, that can help us to save those raw materials for these other applications that we do not know how to do in a more uh, sustainable way yet. And we've seen the cost of solar come down exponentially in recent decades. What can governments do? How can they further incentivize adoption across the region? Yeah, so and the world? Cost- Costs have come have been uh, uh, going down mainly really to uh, a decrease in capex uh, from uh, from manufacturing companies, uh, where um, the way the cost of fabricating the PV module has been heavily re- reduced, and this has been uh, triggered. And we have seen that the seeding has been in Europe due to the feeding tariffs that made um, uh, more and more people uh, were. Um, Adopting this uh, this uh, this solution in the GCC, uh, we still have uh, some uh, some uh, some problems in terms of uh, of uh, how we can boost solar adoption. Uh, but it, the GCC countries are making commendable efforts toward addressing addressing uh, climate change, and uh, um, most of the countries have pledged to net zero uh, emission targets by ne- net century. And this is where the transition to renewables is uh, also expected. Uh, for them to create uh, uh, alternatives for power generation and to create also to help to develop a skilled market job. Uh, in terms of, of uh, policies and what the countries need to do, uh, it is, I mean, what worked in Europe really well at that time was the feeding tariffs, but um, it is not something very easy to implement in the region because many of, uh, of, uh, of um, the nationals across the region do not pay or pay very limited uh, amount for their electricity. So there is an, there should be another kind of uh, innovation in the tax incentives, for example, investment tax credits that can maybe enhance financial attractiveness for the project, uh, increase uh, power uh, public awareness uh, campaign and, private, and public-private partnerships that 
can improve uh, financing and help streamline permitting processes. So uh, what worked in Europe and, and, um, and in, in Japan, for example, may not work here in terms of, uh, of policy and needs to be an innovate innovative approach that needs to be taken in this in this field. And what about the physical barriers then to more deployment in the Middle East? Uh, I mean, the, the geography and the uh, weather is quite specific. Issues like dust, are those problems? And are there any innovations in, in those technologies for PV systems? Yeah, so uh, apart from the from the primary policy barriers uh, and the and the regulatory framework, what we see is that uh, there are some some barriers related to dust accumulation of uh, on solar panels uh, that uh, significantly affect uh, the efficiency. But it is, um, I mean, even if this dust accumulation can lead to losses of uh, around twenty to thirty percent in energy output, and especially in, uh, in uh, coastal areas where this dust is combined with humidity, um, we have been able to develop, the, the community, the solar community, have been able to develop innovative cleaning technologies that are being uh, adapted for, uh, for the region. And this includes automatic robotic cleaning, which uh, minimizes uh, the use of water, which is a really a scarce uh, resource in the, in the region. And, uh, and uh, can operate without manual intervention, which is something very interesting because we are speaking about desert regions that are um, usually far from uh, from the population. So additionally, additionally to the, to that and to to work into these um, main uh, physical barriers related to to dust, there are many advances in uh, in coating uh, to reduce uh, the dust adhesion and. Uh, super hydrophobic materials that will allow uh, the dust to run away with uh, with with rain and we have been doing some some kind of some this type of projects uh, running this type of projects in the region and for example al harsa in in in, in qatar uh, um, it has a robotic semi robotic cleaning panels in the in the power plant so it is a problem yes but there are technological solutions and looking at the technological solutions, let's take that further, because one question that's often asked about solar is what happens when the sun doesn't shine? Um, batteries are a key part of the equation. Are they being successfully included in installations today um, for that problem specifically? Yeah, yeah, you're completely right. Uh, energy storage uh, are becoming increasingly essential for, for in the effectively integrating uh, solar and wind also. But we are speaking here about solar overall the uh, the energy mix mix. So um, we have uh, um, but battery storage uh, technologies, especially uh, lithium ion batteries, that are at the, at the forefront and are demonstrated in a number of uh, markets and in a number of uh, applications, and they are starting to play a significant role in mitigating intermittency uh, issues by storing um, the energy um, the surplus of uh, energy produced uh, during sunlight for for later for later use um there are another another technologies that are coming and we are, we are seeing because lithium battery even if they dominate the market they ha and they have a relative uh, low cost and high uh, energy density um, they still have uh, some problems related with uh, safety and related with uh, degradation calendar aging and cycling aging so there are another technolo other technologies like uh, sodium ion batteries uh, that uh, flow batteries um, that can offer some advantages, in particular for large scale applications and grid storage. And this is something important in 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 the region because of uh, the slow take off of uh, the, the residential market and uh, most of the regions going to big power plants. So having um, large scale storage solutions is, is important. So yes, we, we, we have them um, in mind. And uh, one important thing that I wanted to mention also, it is that uh, um, the local conditions are very different from what we can find in, in other places like, uh, like Europe, the US, or, because it is a very harsh, uh, harsh environment. So having test, test sites, in the region, it is very important to un unblock and to 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 have these technologies adapted to to the region. Yeah, 
And and one thing that's an issue not just for solar but other forms of renewable energy is how do you connect it into the wider grid system and national grids? Uh, is that something that's being uh, currently looked at, done? Uh, can it be done in the GCC countries, the Gulf Cooperation Council, places like Qatar, the UAE, Saudi Arabia? Do you envisage the grid being um, effectively brought together with solar in the future? Yes. Yes, there is a there is a plan. There was a plan for for a regional uh, grid interconnection that was stopped during the blockade. But all these discussions are now taking taking uh, place again, because uh, it is important to have a, an effective integration of solar power into the national grids, and to have uh, uh, investments in grid mo modernization and grid in interconnection to be able to distribute the energy between the different the different countries at regional level. Uh, this will have they will make it uh, that uh, the uh, resilience um, and the effectiveness of uh, of the network, the grid network, will be um, more more powerful. So for this, it is it is essential to establish uh, robust interconnection standards and protocols uh, to handle the variability of solar output and the differences between the different um, uh, code grids. In the in the different countries in the region, so there is a, a, an ongoing collaboration uh, between the GCC countries to foster the development of a regional interconnection. It is not yet at the at the right level it should be, but there are good steps forward to facilitate this energy trading and to have a greater utilization of uh, renewable resources. Because, for example, in Qatar we have mainly solar as a resource. But if you go to Saudi or you go to Oman, depending on on the on the on the region, you have a solar or wind or a combination of both. So, which is uh, something very important also to be able to have a resilient um, renewable resource utilization of renewable resource. Yeah, particularly looking at long term energy security for the region. Let's look look at the tech technologies. Then, I mean, we've seen the, the PVs really dominate the market and change the way they look a lot as well in and work in recent years. But what's the most promising technologies in the solar industry that you're watching at the moment? What's exciting, do you think? So. There are several emerging technologies that are uh, gaining traction, and this include include uh, bifacial uh, solar panels that uh, can harvest uh, sunlight from from both sides. And we are seeing that uh, most of uh, of the projects that are being developed in the in the in the region, they are incorporating this uh, this um, this technology because uh, it is particularly effective in reflecting uh, environments like like deserts and we can have up to 40% of uh, of uh, improvement in the 40% relative improvement in the in the performance of the pv panels um there are other other um innovative solutions that are very uh, very well uh, fit for 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 the region like uh, the solar trackers uh, where we are able to to follow the sun path throughout the day and the, because this uh, this uh, uh, enhance uh, efficiency and maintain optimal angles for uh, for solar solar absorption because we are having the pv panel always facing the sun in the optimal uh, position of course this has uh, this brings some uh, some challenges from a technical point of view to adapt this to to the region uh, because of the sun the humidity um but there are there have been very very good uh, good progress with uh, advanced uh, tracking systems and and softwares and the combination of both of them by fashion with tracking, it is uh, really the winner uh, for. Uh, it's a winner combination for 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 uh, for the region. Yeah. And uh, what about the research in the region? I know uh, in uh, places like Qatar, for example, some of the institutions there, as well as in the Saudi Arabia, UAE, are looking into the use of solar panels and research there. Anything interesting that's jumping out? Yes, so there are uh, many interesting uh, research uh, activities and projects and uh, innovation and new concepts that are coming into the region. So we have, for example, the region is uh, is also contributing to the global efforts in developing uh, perovskite solar cells, which is uh, one of the most exciting developments in photovoltaic technology because um, they have a very high potential in uh, in terms of efficiency when combined with uh, the standard um, silicon cells to have 
uh, tandem uh, solar cells, and they, they have a very low manufacturing cost. So this is, uh, this is uh, very interesting from uh, looking into the future, what a future uh, PV module and material will look like. But also there are very important, uh, a very interesting, uh, some very interesting innovations in the integration of, uh, of PV. So PV is a maturity, uh, is, is a commodity. So what we are looking, it is into new uh, and novel business applications. For example, in the realm of uh, vehicle integrated photovoltaics, um, we are having uh, flexible cells that are being developed to be integrated into the vehicle surfaces, converting uh, idle spaces into energy generation platforms to have uh, solar electrical vehicles uh, chargers. Um, so it is it is a very very uh, thriving ecosystem in terms of uh, of innovation. And there is something very interesting. It is that finally people is understanding, is starting to understand that uh, even if uh, if uh, solar is globally and worldwide known, you need to have um, a specific solutions for a specific climate uh, regions. And uh, this is bringing um, the scalability of manufacturing um, and some manufacturing facilities to the region with the objective of fine tune and tailor the commercial products to um, incorporating technologies and innovation that will make a little bit better in the region uh, than commercial models today. So it is uh, there are a lot of uh, a lot of new new developments and of course the understanding of uh, how are uh, the, the degradation mechanism in, uh, in, um, in the desert. It is not the same to have a PV panel uh, in outdoor under 50 Celsius with high humidity um, as we can have in Qatar in summer sometimes, that to have it in, uh, in Japan, for, for example, where we have less temperatures, we have um, less, less UV. Uh, so it is, uh, it is really um, the, the desert is offering us uh, researchers and, tech and technologues uh, a niche for development of new new technologies and to innovate in the in the PV sector. Great, that concludes the the, the interview. Fascinating, uh, learning more about the, the the work that's going on. I think people um, they look at solar and think that it's already at an advanced stage. Don't really realise the, the the innovation that's going into not just the technology but also the research to take it to the to the next level. Thank you so much, for Veronica, for the time. Thank you very much, uh, Nawit, for uh, for this time and for this discussion. Great. And thank you, of course, to our listeners, to you for tuning in. A new Alatia Foundation podcast will be released in the coming weeks on our website and social media channels. So do take a look at those. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks very much, uh, Veronica. Uh, as for all OK with the recording? Ah, OK. Perfect. Thanks very much. See you soon. Hopefully. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, I'm sure once I'm in Qatar in the next few months, I'll uh, we, we can catch up in person. See you soon. Thank See you. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.